Hi, Dr. Yas here. In this discussion, I would like to talk about what I perceive to be the primary cause of sustained chronic pain for hundreds of millions of people in the United States and globally. And it is not what anyone would expect it to be. In the simplest terms, it is cultural bias. Cultural bias. What that means is that chronic pain in no way has any medical rationale for its, its existence. There is no reason for chronic pain to exist from a medical perspective. What you need to understand is that pain begins at inception of distress of tissue. So the pain begins just at the point when the tissue goes into distress. It does not occur six months before the distress of the tissue or six months after the distress of the tissue. The pain begins at inception of distress of the tissue. So you start to have symptoms. If you were to go to the proper diagnostician at that time, who can evaluate and establish what tissue is in distress, then by definition, if it is accurately diagnosed, it should be able to be treated with the proper intervention. And therefore, all pain should be resolved within the acute phase. The acute phase being three to six months after inception of symptoms. Chronic pain is described and defined as being sustained pain that is greater than three to six months. So you just go from acute pain to chronic pain. Nothing changes in the intensity. The definition simply describes the length of time that you're having your pain. So if this is true, then why is this going on? Why is it that nobody is having their pain properly diagnosed in the acute phase, allowing the pain to be resolved in the acute phase and preventing it from extending to the chronic phase? And the answer is misdiagnosis, as clear as can be. The answer is that for 40 years, the entire global medical establishment has promoted the idea that the MRI is the accurate measure, the gold standard, the primary mechanism for identifying the cause of pain. Pretty much everybody on this planet knows that if you have pain and you seek care, the very third, first thing everyone wants to do is get an MRI. You're not going to get treatment unless you get an MRI. And the MRI will find some structural abnormality that exists. And since it's found for the first time at the time of your, of your pain, maybe it's a herniated disc, or arthritis, or stenosis, any of these types of things that are found. And since it's found for the first time at the time of the pain, it is asserted to be the cause of the pain, which is known as correlative theory or junk science. That doesn't prove causation. Just because a structural abnormality is found for the first time at the cause of your pain, that it means that it is the cause. It's silly. It's nonsense. If you have lower back pain and a herniated disc is found for the first time and is asserted to be the cause of the pain, there is no difference in saying that than me saying, well, that MRI also showed that you have two elbows and that was seen for the first time on MRI. So therefore, two elbows is the cause of your pain. It's literally that insane to make the statement that just because a herniated disc was found for the first time at the time of your pain, it is the cause of the pain. The important thing to understand on the opposite side of that is that if herniated discs cause pain, then those without pain should not have herniated discs. And in 1994, 30 years ago, the first study on people with lower back pain who I did not have lower back pain showed that 70% of the population who does not have lower back pain have bulging or herniated discs. So instantly that basically disputed the idea of herniated di the disc being the cause of pain. And it should have ended any attempt to treat that as the cause. But this is the path that the medical system has stayed on. And so it doesn't really matter. Head to toe, any place you go, people are told arthritis causes pain. Well, arthritis, osteoarthritis cannot cause pain. Meniscus, labral tears don't cause pain. Herniated discs don't cause pain because they're made of fibrocartilage, and fibrocartilage has no pain receptors in them. The, the evidence is overwhelming. Uh, and in fact, one of the biggest contentions I have is the fact that if structural abnormalities cause pain, 
then you should expect to have your pain fairly continuously, 24 hours a day, fairly continuously with very little variation in intensity. And yet almost everyone on the planet who describes their pain describes it as being associated with activity. And once they stop activity, it diminishes. Yes, at some point at night, it might be worse, but certainly stopping the activity makes the symptom stop being generated. So there's just a multitude. Oh, and then muscular causes, of course. If it is a muscular cause, a strain in your neck muscle or your low back muscle or some imbalance between muscles surrounding the knee causing your pain, none of those muscular causes show up on diagnostic tests. So if that is the cause of your pain, you're never going to identify it through diagnostic testing. So it is because of this complete lack of basic validity in terms of how you are being diagnosed that you never get the proper diagnosis. And for 40 years, this has been going on and they keep trying to tell you there's some other reason that you're not getting better. It's, maybe it's in your head. Um, you're just not responding well to their treatments. But ultimately... What it comes down to is the fact that you are all programmed to believe that the system is working. It's just not working for you. That's what cultural bias means. So the way I see this is that I've treated thousands of people and I continue on a daily basis to treat people and they are pain-free and fully functional. Within weeks, they see an 80 to 100% reduction in symptom on that first session. So they're overwhelmed by recognizing for the first time that the cause of their pain is muscular, it's within their capacity to not only resolve it, but prevent, prevent it from reoccurring. And they tell family and friends and coworkers. And what happens? The person doesn't even attempt to want to seek care. Why? Why? Why does that happen? The answer is because they're culturally biased. They just assume, no, no, no. That guy might have gotten you better. You might have had a miraculous recovery. But the reality is, in almost all cases, the cause of pain is what's found on MRI. It's arthritis, a herniated disc, stenosis, pinched nerve. And that won't work for me. So they don't, they're not even willing to seek care. So the purpose of this video or discussion is to hopefully, if you do get a chance to hear this, maybe spark a thought in your brain that maybe the reason you're continuing to have chronic pain isn't you. It's not you're a bad healer. You just haven't been diagnosed properly. That's all. And it doesn't matter, by the way, if the cause was muscular, whether you've had pain for a month or 10 years. If it is a muscular cause, meaning that the force output of the muscle is less than the force requirements of your activity, because you do live in a gravitational environment, so you're always pushing against gravity. So it doesn't matter if your pain started a month ago or a year ago. If there is a force deficit in the muscles required to do your activity and you don't correct that force deficit, you're always going to have it. It never goes away. That's why your chronic pain sustains and you always do associate it with your activity. And for most people, the only people who ever see a resolution in their symptoms are people who stop doing pretty much everything in their life. They stop doing all the activities they love to do which basically is reducing the force requirement of activity. So you have weak muscles, but if I don't need those muscles to do much, well, then I'm probably not going to have pain, but that's not much of a quality of life. So this video has one purpose, and that is to hopefully spark a thought in your head that maybe you can be pain-free and fully functional if you're simply willing to walk away from the cultural bias that has been set by the entire global medical establishment from the diagnostic groups, the treatment groups, the pharmaceutical groups, all of it. It's all being created and they're going to continue to do it as long as people are willing to subject themselves to it. So hopefully hearing something like this will spark an idea for you. And maybe you'll be willing to seek care from something like the YAS method, which interprets the body's presentation of symptoms, which is pretty much what Hippocrates said to do in terms of identifying the tissue in distress or the cause of your pain. And as I said, in 98% of cases, that causes muscular, which allows you with a couple of exercises three times a week. There are specific exercises to the YAS method. They're very specific in their ability to isolate the appropriate muscles 
using progressive resistance, but you can be pain-free and fully functional in just weeks, and now you have control of your life again. So hopefully this video is helpful. If it is, give it a thumbs up. If you like my YouTube channel, Dr. Mitchell Yas, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications when new videos are added or when I'm live on YouTube. If you want to contact me, you could do so by email at drmitch at mitchellyas.com. Or if you decide this makes sense to you and you want to set up a Yas method treatment session, either in Jacksonville, Florida, in person or by Zoom, you can go to my website, Live Without Pains. That's plural, livewithoutpains.com. And there'll be a schedule now button, schedule your appointment, pick the day and time that works best for you. And we'll get you going and get you out of pain in a very short period of time. So for now, this is Dr. Mitchell Yas wishing you a pain-free, fully functional life. Bye-bye for now.